Hey everybody, Sue's here. Today I'm going to show you a keto honey substitute and two super easy recipes to make using the keto honey substitute. I want to thank W. Juan for this video idea and just for being such a loyal OG subscriber and coming back week after week and dialoguing with me. Thank you so much for your loyal support. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We try to film keto cooking videos every single week and we'd love to have you join the crew. So to get started, this is the keto honey substitute we're going to be using. It's awesome because it's sugar free. It does have xylitol in it, which may impact your blood sugar a little depending on who you are and how you react to it. Xylitol does not jack my blood sugar up like other some other sugar alcohols do. Um, but it you know, can still affect it slightly. But I love the consistency of this Keto Honey Substitute. Show you the label a little bit here. I will make sure to link this down below. I ordered it on Amazon. It was a little pricey, to be honest with you, but for the small amount of it that I would use in sauces and stuff, it was worth it for me to go ahead and try it out. You do need to refrigerate it after opening, which is different than your typical honey. You know, I haven't tried it in a tea or anything like that yet, but I do like the consistency and texture of it for these recipes. I'm gonna show you two easy keto recipes today using this keto honey substitute. If you don't have this, you can surely use a little bit of brown swerve or another sweetener of your choice or you could even make either two of these recipes more savory and leave the sweetener out all together. It is totally up to you, but I just wanted to, you know, kind of show you some different little keto products that we use in our kitchen and ways that we kind of can come up with recipes creatively and follow our keto diet still. So first up, I have this keto chili garlic honey shrimp with green beans. So to start with, in a large mixing bowl here. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of this chili garlic sauce. I'll try to link it down below too. I love it, it is super spicy, so if you don't like the spice, you may wanna just use like a tablespoon of tomato paste in place of that. Adding to that two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, along with just one tablespoon of soy sauce. I like to use reduced sodium soy, and you could also use liquid aminos or coconut aminos for that in place of it. And then we're gonna use two teaspoons of our keto honey substitute. And you can see here the texture of it. It comes out of the container easier than regular honey does, but it's still nice and syrupy. Grabbing a whisk, we're gonna mix this all together. And as I'm whisking it, I can feel that resistance that you get when you cook with like a regular honey or a molasses. It's not as sticky or difficult to work with as a regular honey would be, but you can still feel that it is giving that kind of honey texture to your sauce. So after I have that all mixed together, we're gonna add some shrimp. So for this, I'm using a pound of large, oh, these are probably more like jumbo, wild caught shrimp and we did go ahead and shell those and I like to remove the vein out of the top and I like to remove the gunk out of the bottom too. And we're just plopping those into our sauce and then I'm adding about three cups of long stem green beans. Now I always like to buy these flash frozen ones from Costco in a super large bag. I'm at the bottom of the bag so some of these are a little smaller than others but you can use fresh or frozen for this. I just rinse the ice off and strain them and stuck them in there. Using a slotted spoon to just go ahead and start tossing all of this together until our shrimp and our green beans are all nicely coated with our sauce. And this recipe is super easy. You can see to throw together and seems a lot fancier than it is. I went ahead and cut my broiler on 525 with the door cracked and I put my rack as close to the burner as possible. I usually cook one down lower from that, but for this recipe, we're cooking right under that heating coil. And I am just putting our shrimp and green beans in an even layer on this baking sheet that I did line with nonstick foil. And you can easily adjust this recipe to add more or less shrimp. Now that I have that all on there, I am gonna go ahead and sprinkle it with a little bit of pink Himalayan salt, as well as some fresh ground black pepper. And then I'm gonna pop this whole thing under the broiler for six minutes is how long I did mine. You could do it a little longer if you want yours a little more charred, but I did not want to overcook my shrimp. Here it is when it comes out. You can see my green beans have a nice little brown to them and our shrimp are perfectly cooked. And here it is plated up. Now this was super, super delicious. I will be writing this recipe up and getting it on the website 
hopefully sooner than later for you. But hopefully the ingredients are simple enough that you can just follow along on here and kind of jot it down to try making this on your own. Next up, we made this awesome Cajun Parmesan salmon recipe from Delish. I will link this recipe down below. I adapted it slightly and of course we're using our keto honey substitute instead of real honey. But to start with, it calls for four four ounce salmon fillets. I have four, probably about seven ounce salmon fillets here. They are wild caught sockeye salmon. This is different than what I usually use. Just grab whatever type of salmon you prefer. I'm gonna use this just great value organic uh, Cajun seasoning blend on top of our salmon. I'm only gonna be seasoning the top of this because we are gonna be making a sauce, so I'm not worried about the bottom having seasoning on it, but I'm just sprinkling the top with a teaspoon of that Cajun seasoning. And the first ingredient in this seasoning is salt, so I won't be adding any extra salt to this dish. And the skin is removed on the other side of the salmon, as you can see here, which I actually prefer because I hate salmon skin. <laughs> and then I am just topping this with a little bit of fresh ground black pepper as well. And then we're gonna move over to our stove top. So in a large skillet over medium high heat, I'm adding a couple tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Once that's nice and hot, I'm putting my salmon in skin side up. Mine has the skin removed, so you're gonna put yours in the skillet seasoning side down. And I'm about to crowd my pan here, which I don't recommend doing but fish cooks. If it's if it's anywhere near heat, it cooks. So I wasn't really worried about crowding it too much, so I did it. And I'm just gonna let it cook undisturbed for five minutes and then flipping it over. You can see it's got a nice brown to it and the fish is pretty much cooked all the way through just from that, but I am gonna flip it all and then let it cook for just about two minutes longer on the other side. And once that's done, I'm grabbing a clean plate and we're just gonna remove our salmon to that for a moment. And I did go ahead and cut my heat down to medium at this point. And I'm adding in two tablespoons of butter and just kind of stirring that around. And as it's melting, I'm adding in two teaspoons of minced garlic and then stirring that continuously for just a couple seconds before pouring in a third of a cup of chicken broth. And I like to use low sodium broth for everything, so I just have more control. Adding in one tablespoon of lemon juice. And we're also going to be adding in one tablespoon of our honey substitute. And you can see here how nice and thick that is when we pour it into our pan. Mixing that around, again, I can feel a little resistance to it where you can really feel that it's giving you that kind of honey texture to your sauce that you would be looking for. After I have that stirred in, I'm adding another teaspoon of that Cajun seasoning along with one tablespoon of just finely chopped Italian parsley. This is just uh, flat leaf parsley I had in the fridge. If you don't have that, you could totally leave it out of the recipe and it would be just as good. To that, I'm adding two tablespoons of just grated Parmesan cheese, just shelf stable stuff that I had in the fridge. And just stirring that around for maybe a minute tops until it's nice and melty. And then I'm just gonna return our salmon to the pan, flip it over to make sure it's nicely coated in our sauce, letting it sit in the sauce for maybe a minute more tops. Meanwhile, I stuck a bag of broccoli into the microwave and steamed it while this was finishing up. And you could use fresh broccoli. I love buying Kirkland organic broccoli from Costco in the freezer section. It's pre-packaged in one pound bags and the florets are just nice and green and full. Look at this, I mean, it looks fresh. The texture always feels fresh. I microwave it for six minutes, it comes out perfectly. And because I had some shredded parm in the fridge, I opted to top my broccoli with that and that's it plated up. I loved this keto salmon recipe. That little hint of sweetness to it was excellent. Again, if you don't want to use a keto honey substitute or you don't have one, you could use a little bit of brown swerve in this sauce and it would be just delightful. It would be so good. Thank you again for W. Juan for giving me the inspiration to make a keto cooking video highlighting a product that we use with a couple recipes that you can use it in. We will be back next week with probably another quick recipe as we're moving into a really busy time of the year for us. So just hang in there and we'll get our schedules figured out sooner than later. Thank you all so much. Have a fantastic week. Bye.